Jeff, thank you so much for coming and uh, being on the show. I, um, I know you came a long way, all the way from south of Chicago, and um, you showed me a lot of paintings, and I you know, picked out um, three of the ones that I really liked. Um, the last one that we're going to show, the third one, is fantastic. I love it. Just absolutely blew me away. Thank you. I just couldn't believe that, that, that one. I thought that was just in a... I mean, that's just top, top realism as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And uh, these are good also, the others, but I you know, just wanted to tell you that, you know, my gosh, that was something. <laughs> and we'll, we'll look at that one at the end. Okay. Um, so this one here is, uh, you said that you uh, uh, didn't want to pay for model, a model, and I used to do the same, and so you used yourself. Oh. Yeah, so this was the source photo that you composed. Um, and I think you did a you did a nice job. It looks like you got a pretty good likeness as well. I mean, this was taken how many how many years ago was this? Um, I was in college. That was like ten years ago. Oh wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I was going to say you've changed. You know, I can see that yeah. you've changed, but I think it's a good likeness. Yeah. So I didn't. Um, that before I get into the criticism, tell me a little bit just about your history with art and I mean I didn't realize that, that this was painted 10 years ago wow yeah um, I still knew with oils um, the one that you favor that was actually I was still getting used to the material um, back in high school I was exposed to oils mm -hmm. I did not know the material existed I was using acrylics and I hated it because it dried so fast and I drew a lot um, but it wasn't until my art teacher, Mr. Knudsen, um, introduced me to um, oil paints. So mm -hmm. um, it, it just fit. It fit my personality. It just fit. And it just felt so natural to uh, work with oil. So, um, yeah. Wow. So, uh, well, so this was one of your very first, the very first oil painting? Um, or no, one not of the this earliest? one. Um, the one that uh, you'll um, bring up later. Um, that was one of my first ones. That was one of your first oil paintings. That is like just the blows one. me away. Uh -huh. I mean, we'll get, we, we'll okay. save that one for okay. the for the end. But um, that's just amazing. I had Thank no you. idea. So, yeah. okay. So then, um, uh, when you painted this one, can I take a look at the source sure. photo? Um, let me just first of all say that the the source photo is like, you know, very overexposed. Um, yeah. So that would be number one. Is okay. that a lot of the colors? Like I can't really judge these colors. I can tell you changed them, right? In other words, yeah. this is all blown out in the forehead, and you've got it um, more flesh tone brought down, right? So you're yeah. not really doing. You weren't color checking. You were just kind of doing your thing. Just doing my thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, um, how long? I mean, you, you. What you have is, you know, a lot of people would just say that you have natural ability. Okay. You know, and uh, you know, I always say that there's no such thing as a natural talent. You know, you have to put work into it and everything else. Um, but you, uh, to be able to paint this, and I didn't realize that you, you had painted this so long ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really have some talent. <laughs> and that's, uh, I'm impressed. But the photograph is, you know, overexposed. And so as a source photograph, I can't really, you know, look at this and then look at this and tell you where your values are wrong or anything. Okay. because really you really amped up the... Right, because you're ch taking a lot of liberties and stuff. Okay. Um, but, the, but the big picture, I think, is, is that this is um, what I would say is over-blended, you know, in terms of just yeah. really great realism. And the third one that we're going to look at later, you did not blend. I yeah. mean, it, it was nice and textured everywhere, and that was what, what made it so wonderful. Yeah. And this one is more smooth and, and you know, where you've, you've blended a lot. And that blending, um, you know, it's not a, it's somewhat of a matter of taste because some people like that look. Yeah. You know, but it's uh, whether it's a poster look or whatever it is, um, I always um, teach that you should leave the texture. So that if you, when you're painting, you know, even when you get up close, you can still see something, kind of a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, paint that's not all smooth and and, and over blended. Gotcha. So that I would say that this is over blended. Yeah, um, I agree. But I think that, um, you know, in a way, it's kind of a stylized version of, of it. You know what I mean? So it may be that, you know, you amped up the colors, and you were talking about it in one of your emails. You you pointed out this yeah. one area here where you. You know, so you're, you had a lot of, uh, took a lot of artistic license and were doing your thing. And I don't really want to criticize that. You know, that's a matter of taste. Okay. And, um, you know, there's two sides to art, right? And I've said this before. There's the, there's the part where I can say, this is the, I love this as art. And then I can say, is this good realism? I might hate the painting, but he faithfully 
painted the ketchup bottle on the table or whatever. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's how well did you do realism, and then there's art, which which can be like, you know, anything. anything. Really. Right. Yeah. So I don't really like to crit critique the art side. You know, I can tell you that I like it. It's yeah. not like the fa my favorite painting ever or anything like that, but it's, uh, you know, I don't want to really critique that part of it. What I would say is, you know, you've amped up the colors. You kind of like made the eyes have a little more, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And those are all things that... Preference. Yeah, yeah, right. I definitely agree with that. I feel like I can improve so much in colors, like realism colors. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a good... Uh, I, good example of my I guess range of values like I feel like I'm good with um, depth and range. Oh yeah and these, these are wonderful deep colors yeah. here that you got you know that to go and get these all nice and dark like that okay and uh, and you weren't could doing any color check and you were just kind of working it yeah that's that that you you have an ability to see color and value that most people don't have okay. most people have to learn that through color checking all right and i didn't have that ability you know when i first started painting you know and i painted the shadow on my mother's neck i was you know i, I had to go figure out color checking to figure that out okay so um anyway well all right um let's go on to the next one all right so this painting, I really love the the color in. I love how you okay. took liberty with all, with the um, the gold, you know, and uh, the white here. I mean, I just think it's fabulous. All right. Um, and uh, I didn't even see this one. You didn't show me this one in the email. No. And so I was um, really surprised to see that. I mean, this is just, you know, um, if I was to look at the source on this one, you know, there might be uh, a few things in value like. Uh, and this is, in general, I noticed in your paintings, um, some of the other ones that, that we're not showing, that you're over-defining things, you know, like like the, the nostril, that line around there. Yeah. Like, if you look at the source, it's more subtle, and it's not quite as visible. Yeah. So you're just sort of slightly over Styling making it. things um, more distinct and more um, visible than they really are. Even, even yeah. though in some places you're doing it wonderfully, like I love the subtlety in, of this shadow in here and the very slight shifts there. You know, in general it's right. Yeah. It's just some of these little areas like the, around the nose, you're kind of over defining it, yeah. which feels good when you do it. Yeah. Um, you know, like a, even this line around the, the perimeter here. Um, and that's a little bit of a taste thing, like that's kind of a style that might be something yeah. that you're doing, so it might be intentional. Yeah. But that would just be my, you know, realism. I agree. Criti um, criticism. Looking at your, um, like, uh, well, examples uh, that you uh, show online, I, I, I agree with that because I was thinking that same thing. I shouldn't, I should have just kind of, um, you know, been real loose with the brush there, mm -hmm. and I was thinking this area too, the black just going into the face, yeah. just kind of like right. uh, would have blurred it or just made it, I don't know. <laughs> well, well, here's what I would say, is that when you, whenever you're, you know, there's a way you can check that, okay. and you can just go in and say, um, you know, you look at your source and you look at your painting and you say, which is more subtle? It's, it's one of those questions that people will never think to ask. You know, they'll ask every question, they'll notice, oh, the jaw's crooked, or this is crooked, or this is too bright, or the glow's too this or too that. But if I say to you, do you notice that the line around the, around the edge of her nose is a little more distinct, and in the photo it's more subtle, your source? And you know what I mean? And you can see it. Like if I yeah. pointed out to you, you'd say, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. We'll never avoid the temptation to make it more visible because it kind of feels good when you're doing it. You know, you put it in there and you're like, oh, I can see it better. You know, it's the same reason they put edge enhancement on TVs, you know, and stuff and all these artificial things because good. they're, yeah, it's like people, when you show it to them, they're like, ooh, I like that. Yeah. But we're going back to realism. We're going back to, because the real great painting, uh, and I've said this before, but the difference between like uh, an artist who's really you know doing great realism and then the very best in the world it's the best know how to do the subtle thing that when you put a wrinkle on someone's forehead or a, or a you know line under somebody's eye it's just as subtle as it is in the source so that's okay. like and i think that's probably really my biggest 
sort of advice for you going forward is to just look for that subtlety no matter where it is. All right. You know what I mean? Like like the edges of the mouth or, you know. You're, you know, what's, what's interesting is you're doing it so well in places where people don't do it well. For instance, the, the, the general brightness of the nose and the difference here, that's all right. Yeah. It's just a little bit more lines and stuff that you're kind of putting in, which could be, you know, your style. Yeah. But I, was, I that's think just, this is know. the start of when I was trying to do like a style. Uh, like I've been trying to pick up my speed mm -hmm. of painting and, you know, the other models that I've been doing, um, kind of fall a little bit more with the uh, style because I'm just trying to simplify what I do um, just because I'm trying to get it done faster so right, I'm just right. yeah I, I agree with that I'm losing that um, what I used to do like uh, with my uh, paintings I did like 10 years ago um, I, I haven't uh, painted quite like that like mm -hmm. but yeah definitely I agree I need to get back to that yeah well you know it's um um, again, I'm only criticizing the realism, so okay. it may be that, uh, you know, if, if this is your thing and you're kind of like you're developing a style at some point, it's okay. you know, when I, if I tell, if people come to my school of painting, you know, I'm, I don't have anything to offer anybody as a teacher other than here's how you duplicate what you see in front of you, right? So you start with that, and I would force everybody to be, I wouldn't allow them to exaggerate. I wouldn't, if they put a line in, they shouldn't, I'd take, to make them take it out. But then once they graduate, once they're doing they their own thing, that. you can kind of go in any, I mean, there's nothing wrong with like, viv, you know, super vivid colors if that's what you like. Gotcha. So, and then the only reason I'm saying this is because you've been painting for 10 years now. About 14 years, yeah. 14 years, yeah. wow, yeah. yeah. Since high school. Um, right. I was first exposed to the material. Right, yeah. right. And uh, well, have you been consistent all that time? Or? No, I have not. Um, I've been taking breaks. Um, it's just, I feel like I graduate. I just really want to paint and mm -hmm. I take it to the next level. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I've been doing it more like for freelancing now. So it's more continuous because I'm, it's, uh, uh, I'm trying to support myself off of it. Well, okay, let's go on uh, to the next one. All right. I do really like this one. I genuinely like it. Thank you. I, lo I love the, the expression, the color, everything. Thanks. So. Okay, so this was the one that just kind of blew me away. Um, and you did this uh, how many years ago? Uh, this was one of, uh, did I say, like 13 years ago. Uh, yeah. I, and this is your first oil painting? No, not my first. Uh, I was still new to the material oils. Uh, it was like my third third or fourth oil yeah. painting but I really wanted to paint tears like I asked mm -hmm. my art teacher you know um, so he you know got me in connection uh, with this and um, yeah I loved it it just looked familiar to me and I made my own interpretation of um, the image yeah. Sure that. <laughs> yeah yeah um, so yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I really, it's really baff baffling to me okay. that you painted this uh, and it's as good as it is when you painted it with as little experience as you had. Yeah, I mean, I this is like myself. extreme. Yeah, this is one of those things. But I don't, I mean, there, you're doing so many things right. In other words, one of the things is you're leaving your texture in. All right. See how it's got the little, there's some, there's something to it. It's not all blended smooth. You know, so that might have been just the fact that you're using stiff paint or whatever. I don't know. But there's just everything about this. You know, there's going to be a few things where you've, you know, exaggerated your line. I don't see anything offhand, but if I really looked for it, maybe. But even here, you know, this is a, a typical amateur mistake would be to darken this line and be, have it be much darker than that. So your values are right, and this really... I mean, it almost might be one of those things that, uh, you know, Degas, you know, the famous artist, the French, he said that only when an artist doesn't know what he's doing does he do anything. And what I think he meant by that was, you know, sometimes we can overthink things, you know, mm -hmm. and s instead of letting it, you know, and I don't know if that was, a, a, you know, part of that or not, you know. I did a, a painting early on with one of my first portraits, you know, I think like the third or fourth portrait that I've done and even to this day I look at it and it's it I can't believe it came out as well as it did it was some guy that just fell asleep on my couch 
and that was over at my house playing, you know, conga drums with me. And I thought, well, let me paint him. The light was good on his face. And I pulled my canvas over and painted it while he slept. And I was done, and it, and it, and it turned out, you know. Awesome. But I, don't, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I wonder if that was something like with you. Because I, this, this is a masterpiece, okay. I mean, in, in my opinion. Okay, and it's you. really, um, but I, I think that going forward, you know, even though this was so, so many years ago, but I think that this, you know what I mean by the texture? You know, it's not all like smoothie yeah, smooth. Yeah, I had a fight know? against that. Um, you know, I, I, it was new to me and I had to, you know, um, I think, uh, you know, it was during our class, I just was exposed to different examples. And I was like, you know, let me try that mm -hmm. with the material. And um, I kind of blurred my eyes while painting because I didn't want to focus on, um, you know, mm -hmm. lines and overthinking things. And I yeah. did it so fast, I surprised myself. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I was like, you know, no, don't, don't blend it. <laughs> but yeah. um, the, it was that Monday morning, I brought it in. And uh, you just quick story, my uh, art teacher was like, you did this? I was like, yeah. yeah. And he was just so protective over it, even more than I was. It was hilarious. Yeah, well, um. <laughs> he, he, he knew what he was looking at because okay. he hadn't seen anything like that before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, and then, you know, going forward, you had mentioned that you don't, you're not really pursuing a professional career as an artist. You're no. not trying to get into galleries. You no. just love to paint, and you don't even yeah. want to do that. Is that right? I mean, you... Yeah, it doesn't fit my personality. You know, art has served a purpose for me, and... Um, somewhat personal um, and mm. I just feel it's best in its place like um, anything outside of that I think would uh, interfere with more important things so yeah. right 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 commercial yeah. doesn't it doesn't sound good to me <laughs> yeah yeah the whole rat race of all that yeah, yeah. was there anything that you wanted to ask me beyond any oh of this um, stuff? yeah I kind of wanted to work with uh, collaborate with other artists is that unheard of like photographers or like yeah um, you know um, that just appeals to me because I you know tried to do it on my own and I feel like uh, yeah that's an interesting question I think that um, you know there are great artists in history you know husbands and wives or whoever or people that, that you know friends that collaborated and, and created work together that's certainly been done Okay. You know, when the galleries, uh, when you go and you're trying to get into galleries in general, um, you know, I don't know that this is always true, but galleries sort of want to know that, you know, you're not just copying somebody else's photographs, okay. you know, whatever that means. Um, but I think that all that really is, you know, I don't, you know, have an opinion about that. I feel like if you want to collaborate with somebody and you and, and they want to do the photography and you want to use that as your source photos because you want to collaborate with them, I think that's wonderful and, and great and you should do it. Okay. But in terms of, you know, how that's all going to be seen by the by the art critics and everything, that's a whole different thing. Okay. And, and, you know, my feeling is that's a big political world um, and you can think about all that stuff, but that's business. You know, okay. that's kind of like, you know, there's three parts to, to, to it. I mean, and you could probably divide it up in different ways, but there's the, there's the art part, which is the real deal. Like, you know, you create art and it moves people. Okay. And that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the heart of it. But then there's the, okay, how do I make money with this stuff? Yeah. And then there's the, the politics, which kind of gets into both, you know? Okay. Um, and so therefore, um, it sounds to you like you don't want to do all that politics stuff. You just mm. want to do your thing. So yeah. I think you ought to do it, you okay. know. And uh, I don't see any, you know, if that's really what you want to do. Um. And you know this. And it sounded like uh, I was going to, um, when we were getting set up, I was talking about helping you with your photography and that I could okay. help you. And you didn't seem to have any interest <laughs> in learning any of that. And I think that's, uh, you know, to each his own. Everybody's, okay. uh, yeah. But... Uh, well, what I would say to you and what I can tell everybody who's listening is that photography for an artist doesn't have to be complicated and right. it shouldn't be complicated. And it's the simplest form of photography there is. Now, what do I mean? I mean, we're going to, if I teach it, I, I teach to shoot in manual. So you've got, you know, just some basic settings. You set it, you get a good exposure. And because digital cameras, they give you a preview so you can be like, oh, that's too bright. And you can turn the dial until it looks good. You focus it and you hit the button. And, and what, 
the real talent in photography is not that. The, photo the real talent is looking and saying, ooh, I want to paint that, or I like that, or you set something up, mm -hmm. and now i got to document it. Oh, give me that camera. Click. Now I've, now I've got it. You see what I mean? In other words, it's, it's in choosing what you're going to paint. That's the real difficult part yeah. of photography. Yeah. So the other part, now, I mean, and some people just don't want to, you know, it's like, I don't want to touch cameras. So that's fine. But it's, uh, I don't want you to be afraid of them, you okay. know, going forward. So anyway, but going back to collaborating, that might just be something that is, uh, you know, part of the experience for you. And I think that's wonderful. So right. I, I wouldn't say, but um, it does, uh, when I look at what you've done, and you sent me a lot of work, yeah. and some of it was just, you know, this on a certain level, and, and the other, the, there were some other things that weren't, the quality wasn't as, as good. Yeah. And that's real normal for, I mean, in, in my early work, I've got some that I cringe, you know, when I look at them because they're, they're so poorly painted. But that's part of the, the experience. But what I would do is I would say, is pick out your best work eventually when and you've got an Instagram account right mm -hmm. now right and I'll put yeah. I'll put the, a link to that in the description All right. so people Thanks. can go see more of your work All right. um, which which I would encourage them to do because you've got a lot of, of work but what I would say is that and I've said this before but show people your best work yeah and so you pick out your your favorite 10 and then the rest you just you know put up hide them or whatever or give them to your friends <laughs> and family or whatever but um, in terms of you know establishing who you are as an artist, you've got to have a portfolio that, you, that that's public, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. We? So just focus yeah. on the quality of your work and. Yeah. And then uh, let you know see where it goes. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And by the way, I have my own art supply company right here in Austin, Texas, and we manufacture all of our own products. We have a whole line of paint and brush holders, palettes, color checkers, all sorts of things. So go check that out if you haven't at GenevaFineArt.com.